Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of 10 with Tom. Happy birthday, Deb. Even though I'm not with you today, I'm thinking of you. And so I hope you have a great day. So uh, if you're around the office today um, or you're on Facebook, be sure and wish my lovely wife a happy birthday today. Uh, so um, today we are looking at an anniversary and a topic that gets so many people in ministry riled up, uh, something that is the source of all kinds of controversy. And so we're going to get to that here in just a second. Um, so 75 years ago, and I've been away from the news for a few weeks, so I'm not sure exactly if this was covered or not, but 75 years ago yesterday, 1946, an item of clothing made its debut at a Paris fashion show. And it's been making waves ever since. Um, two years after the French people had enjoyed liberation from the Nazi occupation, they experienced another kind of liberation that took place along the sunny beaches of the Mediterranean Sea. A few daring women decided to wear a new type of bathing suit that showed more than had ever been seen before in public. The tiny two-piece suit was named the Bikini, in honor of the tiny Pacific island where the United States was testing the atom bomb. The skimpy new suit caused its own explosions, and those explosions are still being felt today. You see, probably the most controversial topic on youth pastor forums is what is your church's policy on bathing suits? And it's all over the map. Some churches say, yes, we make people wear bathing suits. Other churches, it has to be a one piece. Other churches are like, no, one pieces are too revealing. Uh, they're too tight. Um, and so we can't have those. Other churches, you can wear shorts and a t-shirt. And so different churches set different rules uh, based on some of their own standards, maybe the cultural norms of their area. But then everybody argues about who's right and who's wrong. Now, initially in the United States, Americans totally rejected this new swimwear, these bikinis. Um, they preferred the one-piece bathing suits that were popularized in the movies of the 1950s. But gradually, the bikini became more and more acceptable in American culture. And then in the 1960s, a series of beach movies were made, a lot of times with popular music of the day, and a song came out that really pushed the bikini into the forefront called Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. And that helped those skimpy swimsuits become more and more popular. And today, all you have to do is go to the beach and you can see that the bikini is as popular as it has ever been. All right? Now, even though it's popular, it doesn't mean that the debate over it has ended. Okay? Um, and sometimes it goes on. I told you about the youth pastors. It goes on um, all over the place, sometimes even in homes between uh, parents and, and their kids. Um, if you've had a chance to see Matthew West's recent video, Modest is Hottest, uh, it, it's an open letter to his daughters, his teenage daughters, um, and they're even arguing over what the point of that is. Is it satire? Is it making fun of people who have strict standards? Is it an honest plea from a parent trying to get his girls to dress modestly? Um, no matter how you view it, it's a funny video. So if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, again, the artist is Matthew West, a contemporary Christian artist. The song is Modest is Hottest, and it's certainly worth a look because it is um, a really, really cute song. All right. Now, while these matters, uh, in a lot of cases, are a matter of personal taste, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you're comfortable in, uh, the Apostle Paul had a few things to say about what sh we should think when it comes to what we wear and how we look. Rather than letting the latest um, fads dictate what we wear, Paul said that we should be more concerned about our inner character and our good works. We are more attractive when we're being kind, gentle, and patient than when we're just showing off our bodies with revealing clothing. So, understand that clothing styles will come and go, but a beautiful character lasts forever. And that's the important thing. 
your character. And, and so the question becomes, why do you wear the things that you wear? I hear a lot of people say, well, I just wear what I wear because it makes me feel comfortable. There's something to be said for that. You want to wear something that is, is comfortable. One of the greatest um, examples of that is the current trend with yoga pants. Um, you know, one time yoga pants would have been something that you would have worn under something um, because they're so tight. Um, then it was, okay, well then you, you know, throw a pair of shorts over top of them um, or you wear a long shirt over them. But now you see people in, of all ages uh, wearing them out in public, uh, not even giving a, a, them a thought to um, you know, how tight and how revealing they are because they're comfortable. Every girl, mom that I've talked to loves yoga pants because they're so comfortable. All right? But I've also talked to a lot of people and when you have the discussion over bathing suits, you know, why do you pick that bathing suit? Well, because I like it. Okay? Or because it's comfortable. And they'll always deny the fact, why wear that? Because I'm going to get noticed in that. And so a lot of times we pick out uh, what we're going to wear because of who's going to look at us. We want to be noticed. And so what Paul's saying here is you want to be noticed for your character. You want to be noticed for the person that you are. You know, I, I said something at camp a few years ago, and um, it got a lot of laughs, but I've had a lot of people come up and say, you know, thank you for saying this um, because it's, um, it's made us think about what we wear. And it's not, we're not trying to be body shaming when we say this. Uh, but we honestly want people to think about um, what are your long-term goals. And, you know, we, when we pull our clothes out of the closet, we're not thinking long-term goals. We're thinking short-term. We're thinking immediate. You know, um, who's going to see me today that's going to be attracted to me? Um, and so as we were talking about what may or may not be appropriate for Christians to wear, especially Christian girls to wear, um, one of the things that I said was if you want to wear a tight bathing suit, a skimpy bathing suit, and your goal is to get guys to look at you, first of all, guys, we got to do a better job of not having lust in our hearts. You know, yes, guys are attracted visually to what they see, all right? But we need to look beyond what we first see, to look at the characters of the young, or the character of the young women that we're looking at, to understand that they are special, unique, creatures of God and to love them because of that okay uh, and, and in loving them we respect them okay they're not an object okay we need to get past that and guys need to learn that but to the girls I said this if you're going to use your boobs to attract a guy the kind of guy that you're going to attract is a boob and they all laughed but then they all thought about it and a person who's only attracted to you because of how you look, probably isn't real concerned about who you are, about the kind of character that you portray. And so that's something we need to think about as we continue this long, on, long ongoing debate that's now been 75 years on what do we wear to the beach? What do we wear to the pool? All right. So while we don't have the long, hard, fast rules, we want you to use your own discretion and think about what it is, what's my purpose when I wear what I wear. So just something to think about today on 10 with Tom. Um, now, uh, I did mention that I will be home in, in just uh, a couple of days. I'm on my way home. And so we've got a couple of things coming up on Friday, our confirmation class. Uh, we're going to try and gather together and have lunch together on Friday. Um, and so uh, you can meet us at the church at, at noon and I'll get you more information out on that. Uh, we're looking forward to just having a, a good time together, kind of catching up a little bit since our confirmation journey has ended. Uh, for our mission team, uh, you're also going to be meeting Friday night uh, at 6.30. Uh, we'll be going over some more things for our upcoming trip to Charleston. Next week is Vacation Bible School, and it's going to be a busy week, an exciting week. We've got lots of activities for all of the volunteers who are working with us. Um, of course, we've got some training going on on Sunday and set up and all those things. Uh, and uh, youth group will be happening. Uh, we'll be outside Sunday night and Wednesday night. We've got a game day Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so a lot of things happening. Uh, and then the week after that, our food mystery tour is coming up on July the 20th. And if you haven't been on a food mystery tour, that's probably something that you're going to want to be a part of. So uh, all that to look forward to. Uh, we're about halfway through summer or getting close to the halfway point. So lots going on, but lots still to look forward to. So want to let you know, I miss you guys. I love you. I can't wait to see you all again. So hopefully 
We'll see you this weekend. Have a great rest of your week. I love you.